Hey guys, I'm Eddie and I'm doing my talks on IV fluids again and this is just to stress the importance of picking up this bag of fluid, looking at it, seeing what's in it before you give it to the patient because these ingredients could potentially harm your patient so you should know what's in it. Uh, in this case I have LR, I already did a talk on normal saline, I hate calling it normal saline but it's a bad habit because as I mentioned in that video it's by no means normal. Um, but let's go through LR, which is what some people consider the IV fluid that surgeons use, but I think that everybody should use LR uh, under the right clinical circumstances, of course. So let's go through this just like I did with the saline solution. Uh, this is a 1000 cc bag, and if you look at the details here, if I can zoom in, in uh, each 100 cc's there are 600 milligrams of sodium chloride, as it says right there. Uh, Remember that saline solution, normal saline, had 900 milligrams per um, 1,000 cc's, so this has a lesser concentration of sodium chloride. Uh, one of the cool things about the bags of LR is that they, they give you the, the quantities in both milligrams and in milliequivalents per liter. So we're going to go through mostly the milligrams and the milliequivalents per liter, but it has some tongue tied. But you see here that it has. 310 milligrams of sodium lactate. Notice that sodium lactate does not say lactic acid. That's a huge, huge controversy with this fluid in this in this day and age, where we're basically measuring our resuscitation based on lactic acids in patient serum. Um, this this is not lactic acid. This is sodium lactate, and nobody explains it better, uh, at least from the people who have seen online, than Josh Farkas, uh, who writes for poemcrit.org. And I'll link his various articles where he discusses this and uh, gets a little bit more into the chemistry stuff than I do. But he does a great job explaining why this is not uh, why this is not lactic acid. In addition, it has 30 milligrams of potassium chloride. It also has 20 milligrams of calcium chloride, and uh, this also has a pH. Well, this has a pH of 6.5 with that variation between 6.0 and 7.5. This is also a Viaflex container, which as I mentioned in the saline solution uh, releases the DEHP as well as uh, different acids that could, alter the, that could alter the pH of the actual fluid. Now, one of the things that's important is a strong ion difference about these fluids. Um, regular uh, serum has a strong ion difference of 42. Uh, saline solution has a strong ion difference of zero and this has a strong ion difference of about 24. Um, basically what strong ion difference is, is um, the, the difference between the cations and the anions in the fluids. Uh, I can link you to something, uh, basically explain that a little bit better than what I can because I'm not a chemist and this is uh, the strong ion difference concept is something that's controversial. But nonetheless, I think it's the best way to understand that this, this fluid causes a lot less metabolic acidosis than does uh, saline solution. So take that into consideration. So let's go through the, the individual ingredients. On the sodium, it has 130 milliequivalents per liter, which is hypotonic, uh, if you think about it. Um, normal serum, if you look at the reference ranges on our labs, is between 135 to 145. This at 130 uh, could tend to cause some hyponatremia. Um, just know that this is uh, not a type of IV fluid that you want to use on patients with traumatic brain injuries, uh, large strokes, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhages. You want to try to preserve the brain as much as possible um, and use something different uh, for those patients. Definitely not LR or anything hypotonic. Uh, looking over here, it has four milliequivalents per liter of potassium, and this makes a lot of people uneasy because they say, "Oh, you know, this patient's hyperkalemic. If we give them LR, we're going to be giving them more potassium." But if you think about it, you're giving them four milliequivalents per liter per this whole bag. So, if you think of somebody who has a potassium uh, in their serum of, let's say, six and then you go ahead and you give them four milliequivalents in this one liter, you actually bring them, you actually bring their, their potassium level down. Um, you're not going to be bringing it up and that's something that that it's not just dumping like four milliequivalents like into the blood, you're actually putting it in this particular vessel. So it's not, it's not going to be directly four milliequivalents that you're adding to their blood. Uh, the other thing that's important is how since this fluid is less, creates less acidemia, 
than saline solution, you have less shifts from the intracellular space of potassium to the extracellular space. Just think about somebody who's in DKA, right? They get to the ED, uh, you as their physician have to have to manage the patient. Initially their K is, is six point something. Well, as soon as you give that patient some, some insulin, uh, and some treatments to try to resolve that acidosis, you're going to notice that the patient's actually going to become hypokalemic pretty quickly. Why? Because their extracellular potassium shifted back intracellularly, and um, that's it. You, you got out of the hypokalemia period. So this creates less acidosis than saline solution. So keep that in mind, okay? Um, this also has calcium. It has 2.7 milliequivalents per liter of calcium. And why is that important? Well, you do not want to run LR down the same tubing as you do as as you would run uh, blood products. Um, and it has to do with the citrate in the blood products. Uh, chloride of 109. That's normal phys normal reference range in your labs. Look like uh, 98 to 110 or so. Uh, this does not create the hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, although. Uh, kind of wish that chloride level was a little bit lower. Here comes the kicker, the lactate. It has 28 milliequivalents per liter of lactate. As I mentioned before, this does not mean lactic acid. Okay, they're two completely different molecules. Um, lactate is metabolized both in the liver and the kidneys and the data I found is about 85% in the liver and 15% um, in the, the renal cortex and this is converted over to bicarb. Um, please, don't think that this is going to be dumping direct lactic acid into the person. Now, if the person does have a completely dysfunctional liver, you will run into problems. So use your, use your good clinical judgment when, um, when administering this fluid. And lastly, the osmolarity of this fluid, um, which is over here, is 275 milliosmoles per uh, liter which is hypotonic. <clears throat> um, and that's, as I mentioned before, one of the reasons why you don't want to use this particular fluid in patients who are uh, traumatic brain injuries, patients with massive CVAs or other neurologic catastrophes. So this is LR. And um, if you have any questions or anything for academic discussion, feel free to reach out to me. Check out the links below for the people who are smarter than me who actually write these things. I'm just here to show you what a bag looks like. Thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.